Where are Russia's T-14 Armada tanks? Seemingly not in Ukraine, the Russian military's seeming mighty T-14 Armada main battle tank has long been touted as a potential game-changer for Moscow. Since first being displayed during the May 2015 Victory Day parade in Moscow, the tank's advanced capabilities have been praised. However, the tank has been absent from the battlefield of Ukraine, possibly where it would be needed most. Work on the Armada program began in 2010 when the Russian Ministry of Defense terminated work on its Object 195, the T-95 program, which was far less revolutionary and simply too evolutionary. Instead, the new Armada project was seen as a huge technological leap from Soviet-era military hardware designs. The Armada program was to be from the ground up very much distinct from past Soviet-slash-Russian tank platforms. The outline of the tank, from its hull to its long and boxy turret, which resembles Western tank turret designs, was a notable departure from past Soviet designs. The T-14 also featured seven road wheels, instead of the six wheels that were commonplace on almost all previous Cold War Soviet and even modern Russian MBTs. Among its other innovative characteristics was its unmanned turret, which included a remotely controlled 125mm smoothbore main gun with fully automated loading. The turret's magazine could contain a total of 45 rounds of ammunition, whilst the main gun could also fire laser-guide missiles. In addition, the 2A82 125mm gun was designed to be upgraded to the 2A83 152mm gun, while the T-14 was also fitted with secondary weapons including a cord 12.7mm machine gun or a PKTM 7.62mm machine gun. The roof of the T-14's turret also was developed to house a meteorological mast, satellite communications, global navigation satellite system, datalink and radio communications antennae. The Armada platform was also designed to keep its three-man crew protected. First, the T-14 MBT features a low silhouette that reduces exposure to enemy fire and that enhances the safety and survivability of the crew. Moreover, the driver, gunner and tank commander is housed in a crew compartment located in an armored capsule at the front portion of the hull and isolated from the automatic loader, as well as the ammunition storage in the center of the tank. The crew compartment was also designed to be made from composite materials and protected by multi-layer armor, which according to analyst reports can withstand a direct hit of nearly any type of round that currently exists including sub-caliber and cumulative rounds. The forward section of the tank was also developed to be covered with an active defense system that is designed to intercept anti-tank munitions including sub-caliber rounds such as those from anti-tank guided missiles, rockets and RPGs. The result is that the T-14 is reported to offer up to Stanag 4569 Level 5 protection. The front hemisphere of the tank was developed to utilize reactive armor while the rear was fitted with bar armor that provides additional protection from anti-tank weapons such as an RPG. Crew comforts have always been lacking in an armored vehicle, but the T-14 was designed with an internal toilet so the crew doesn't need to exit the tank to answer nature's call. The T-14 may not be in Ukraine, simply because Moscow doesn't have enough to actually send. As previously reported, Russian tank manufacturer Ural Vagonzavod first said the T-14 would be delivered in 2018. Then the distribution of the first nine tanks would come in 2019. After this date came and went, the leadership said 20 would be tested and 80 would be ready by the end of 2021. Moscow had announced last year that the T-15 Armada would enter serial production this year, but it seems that the new cutting-edge MBTs won't be ready until after next year at the very earliest. It is easy to see why the T-14s aren't in Ukraine. Russia simply doesn't have the numbers to use them effectively. There is little reason to deploy the few T-14s, which are faster and more capable than the older tanks now fielded in Ukraine. If anything, deploying the most advanced weapons alongside the rest of their antiquated tanks would only put the T-14s in harm's way. But another consideration is that Russia can't afford to lose any. Moscow may not have expected much resistance in Ukraine, 
and therefore it had little reason to risk its shiny new toys in its special military operation. That may be for the best for Russian Federation President Vladimir Putin, as each T-14 reportedly costs in excess of $3.7 million, roughly 20 times the price of a US-made Javelin anti-tank rocket, which comes in at around $175,000. The Ukrainians have proven to be using the Javelin and British-made laws to great success. Already, the financial loss to Russia, which is facing economic hardship due to the crushing sanctions, could be far greater than the physical damage to Ukraine. Simply put, Russia can't afford to lose this war, but if it manages to achieve its goals it could still be a Pyrrhic victory. With that in mind, deploying the T-14 isn't worth the risk in money, but it certainly wouldn't be worth the risk in reputation for the largely unproven tank either. When one was reportedly destroyed in Syria, Western media jumped on the story to report it. By not deploying the T-14, it remains a mystery, a potentially powerful weapon the West should fear. If the Ukrainians destroyed even one or two it would make for a significant photo op. The Kremlin may be simply making sure that doesn't happen.